things they taught us from first grade on up till where we're at now that you live in where? And you say, I live in Page. I live in Flagstaff. I live in Phoenix. The judge has heard you say, I'm dead. I don't have anything to do with this, and I can't speak. That's why you have to have an attorney speak for you, because you're dead. You're a corporation. You're a corp. These are the words that they use. If you look up corporation, it means dead. Something dead. Corpse. It comes from the word corpse. You guys, come on, man. These are just words. We can do this. Okay. Um, the Postal Service cannot discriminate against the, u- the non-use of the zip code. See Postal Re- uh, Reorganization Act. Public Law 91-375. That's about the fifth bullet down. In 1997, I attended a seminar on state citizenship and traffic issues. A page in the seminar handout titled The Patriot, Zip Code Uses use, Invokes Federal Jurisdiction. They had to, this to say, and I'm not including material already covered in above. That's really, a heavy, uh, that's really a heavy thing right there because a lot of the Patriot people understand this. Now, I'm not saying I'm a Patriot, and I'm not saying I'm not. What I'm saying is, get to Caesar what's Caesar's. And when you understand who Caesar is, it's really a cool thing. Okay, raise this up some more. Let's get. i got to show you what, this is the, the coolest thing I've, I've seen in a long time that, that I found. Keep going on up. State abbreviations. Okay, right there. Remember the claim above that said the Pennsylvania Commonwealth is one of the several states, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is also known as PA? Uh, it's a subdivision of the District of Columbia. If you accept postal matter sent to PA and or with a zip code, the courts say that this is evidence that you are a federal citizen or a resident. Now, one of the tricks of the trade is they don't have to tell you why you're in dishonor when you come to court. And they have to get your consent. And they have to get your consent several different ways. This is one of them. So if you respond to the court with a zip code or you tell the judge that you're in a zip code when you tell him your name and address, you are done. Okay? So... Now, here's the cool thing. This was in the document from 1998. Fourth edition, 1968, is also um, some, some great stuff. But if you look at the state name Alabama, Alabama, the U.S. Postal Service says that they're not yet a state. Alaska is not yet a state. It's spelled out Alaska. Arizona is not yet a state. Now, let's look at the states that are states. Raise that up a little higher. Connecticut, Delaware, Georgia. The 13 states. Wow, the several states. Do you see how, how deep they've, they've buried all this stuff from us? And all we got to do is read. All this stuff is on the Internet. They have to give you notice. The cool part is that they give us notice in movies. I mean, they gave us notice with The Wizard of Oz. They gave us notice with The Matrix. All these things are for us to understand that we can participate in the act or we can decide not to play in the act. Now, here's the... A thing that we, we learned nine months ago. When you're walking around, let's say you're jogging or using exercise around a basketball court. And there's a bunch of guys playing basketball on the court. You get the word court? Did you get the word court? Yeah. Okay. And as you're walking by, somebody says, hey, come on, play some basketball with us. And you go, man, I don't want to play basketball, thanks. I'm just I'm going to get some exercise here. And you just keep walking. Well, they throw the ball to you. When you catch the ball, you're in the game. That's it. So what we were learning was to dodge the ball. So we're playing dodgeball whether we're playing basketball. So we'd go to court, and we would dodge the ball. What's your name? Why do you need my name? What's your address? What's your birthday? I mean, we're, we're doing all this stuff. Now we've come to the point where we just catch the ball, and we hold on to the ball. Game's over. That's our right. That's the republic working progress. We, we just like to walk off, off the basketball court with the ball. It's ball. See, everything that the judge gives you is an offer. If you go to McDonald's and you order something, who has to pay? So when the judge orders you to do something, who's got to pay for it? The judge has to pay for it. His next job is to fake you into paying it. You guys understand that? He wants you to be surety for his order. Now, I'm telling you all this, though, there's a lot of people that are staring at me like I'm crazy, but there's a lot of people out there that know exactly what I'm saying because they've done this, okay? How do you cancel a contract? Go ahead. Conditionally accepted. <laughs> okay, what he said was you can, you can amend any contract as long as you're in honor in the original contract. So if I have, uh, let me say this, this is a good analogy. I told Thomas, I'm going to take out your trash for the next 10 years. I live right next to you. Have I told this on tape before? 
Have I told this one? Last week. Okay. I'm going to tell it again. It's a really great way. And so I take out his trash every Saturday morning. For eight years, I finally get sick and tired of it. Now, I've told him I'm going to take out his trash. No matter what, rain or shine, I'm going to take out your trash for you every Saturday morning. So I roll it out for him. After eight years, I go, man, I am sick and tired of taking out this guy's trash. He didn't even tell me thanks. And you know what? He's not even hitting the trash can now. He's just throwing it out kind of on the side yard. And i got to pick it all up and put it in the trash can. So I notice him. Tom, I'm getting tired of taking out your trash. I know I told you I would, but I'm getting kind of tired of you. You haven't been hitting the trash can, and, and this isn't what I really thought it would be. I thought I'd get a little more thanks for it. And so here's what I'm going to tell you. If you can come up with some really good idea or reason or some kind of amendment why I shouldn't cancel this contract, please let me know in the next 21 days, or I am canceling this contract. And by the way, if you don't respond, you get to take out my trash for the next eight years. And I send it to him. And, but I don't just take it over. I've got to have a witness. So I use a notary presentment, which is Mr. Jones, the next-door neighbor from all of us. So Mr. Jones goes over and goes, hey, Tom, here you go. Bill's picked. So he reads it and he goes, well, he can't change that. I ain't got time to answer it. i uh, got a wedding to go to, whatever. So then I send a second notice. Mr. Jones, would you take this over? You haven't responded to my first notice, therefore I'm giving you a second notice. No response. The third notice I give to Mr. Jones, I go, hey, would you take this over and tell him the deal's over? He takes it over and he gives him his third notice, all signed, sealed, and he witnesses it. Now, he gets up a month later and he says, hey, 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 my trash is piling up, Bill. And I go, didn't you get my notice? He goes, yeah, but you can't change a contract. Oh, but I did. And it's now enforceable because you didn't respond. You acquiesced. That's how they get you in court. That's how you get, they get you on a traffic ticket. That's how they get you to be in dishonor, which is the same thing as default. So I said, by the way, you got to take out my trash for the next eight years because you didn't respond. That's how you cancel a contract. So let's say the IRS, anybody, uh, I shouldn't use the word IRS. Let's say that you get something in the mail that you don't agree with. You can say, I accept your offer on the condition that you can show me the law, a statute, says I have to do that. And you have 21 days to respond. You send it back to, can they respond? They can respond because if they told the truth, they would show the fraud. So what they do is they just don't respond. How many people in here sent something to Timothy Geithner in the last year? Anybody get a response back from him? No. Nope. That's because we're telling the truth. And he knows it. Great. We've got some guys that are going to help pay the bills around here. How many people use the IRS to pay the bills? Right on. Look at this out here, man. There's guys here that use the bank called the Internal Revenue Service to help us out. They're the enforcers. How would you like to have them out collecting your debts? Man, I love it. Those guys are on it. And there's forms so that you can get those guys to do that for you. They put it out for you. If you need us to collect debts for you, let us know. If you're a creditor, let us know who they are so we'll go get it for you. It's great. Well, it happened to be a court. We'll go get them. It happened to be a traffic ticket. We'll get them. I mean, their motto is, we'll get them for you. All you got to do is learn how to use those guys. Okay? Remember this, that you are the sponsor of the credit of the nation. You're the sponsor of the credit for this nation. Without you guys, there'd be nothing. Your family, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, did they give you a check? Did they, they get you into probate and tell you that you guys are wealthy? Did they tell you that there's inheritances beyond your wildest dreams for you to use? They didn't tell you that because they don't have to. All they had to do was give the remedy. They didn't have to tell you where it's at. So listen, you guys, if you want to become a secure party creditor, I highly recommend it. But don't take it lightly. Don't use it to someone else's disadvantage. When you're a creditor, we always stand in honor and take care of the debt. Okay? Does that help out anybody? Does anybody have any questions about the zip code now? <coughs> Good. I, I, go ahead. I'm just wondering, did you say that... Um, you, as a creditor, cannot use a zip code to mail something to somebody who is not, like something in a de facto? I would just be very careful. Yeah. If so you understand the zip code. Yeah, this, do I need to go over the uh, Four Corners Rule real quick for everybody? Does anybody understand that? Or the four Corners Rule. If you pull that up on the Internet, Four Corners Rule, it'll tell you exactly. It, it'll give you the whole thing. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this out. Go ahead. I just pulled up zip code as a search on the Google. It's called the Four Corners Rule. Uh, whenever that corporation up in King County and the judge's oath and how he tried to sneak yeah. a fast one, sure, I should do that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
anything within a four corners only pertains to the four corners. So if you have a document like this, okay, and there's writing on it, everything on that document is part of that document. If you use a square box like this with your typewriter and you put in your zip code like this, that means it's not part of the document. It's, they, they can't see it. The judge can't see it. Anybody else can't see it. When you make a uh, payment on your credit card, um, and let's use this as a return voucher, there's four boxes, and there's a period here, and then yeah. there's two more boxes here. Yeah. Okay? I'm going to give you a little clue what's going on. When you put anything in here, $1,141.16, and you send it to them, they don't recognize that. They adjust your account. But that didn't go anywhere except into their pocket. They've got a secret, it's called a secret account, and they deposit that into a special account with your name on it. After three and a half years, and I don't know why it's three and a half, but after three and a half years, they notify the IRS that you've abandoned your money. Can we keep it? And the IRS says, absolutely. Just send us our cut. Anything in a box doesn't apply to the contract. Okay, so if you get a traffic ticket from a highway patrolman and you want to be nice, put a box around it, sign your name in it. When it gets to the judge, he's got real problems because there's no signature on it. Okay. Say that again. Put a box around your name when you sign it. Put the box first. Box off the contract. See, that's a contract. When you sign a ticket, it's got the officer's name on it, it's got your name on it, it's got the terms of the contract on there. Okay. You're to show up in court and pay the bill. That's what the contract is. So if you put a box around your signature area and you sign it, your signature isn't on that document. Now, if you know how to defend that when you get to court, that's a great thing. If you don't know how to defend it, you get there and you think the judge is going to throw it out, he's going to come around on the backside and get you for something else like a zip code or a birth date. I don't want to get anybody in trouble here because I will tell you this, if you learn just enough to get yourself in trouble, you're going to spend five days in a county jail like I did. <laughs> I wrote a song, it's called Spent Five Days in a County Jail because I told the judge to go to... <laughs> All right, so this is the Four Corners Rule. Now, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to make this another box right here. Now, let's do this. This is what the judge's oath, he sent me the, his oath of office and this is what it looked like. And um, it said, right here, it said, Oath. And then it said his name. And it said, I swear to uphold the Constitution and, nah, 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 and all the other stuff that they say. And then it had his signature here. And then it had, um, I think it was the clerk of the court's signature right here. And there was an area here that was supposed to have a seal in it. Because the seal would, would have vi uh, validated that oath. But what they did is they took a seal and stamped it over here and then it said justice or something seal and it said Utah like this and then down here at the bottom it said this is a true and certified copy and where it said certified copy and then it was signed and the lady that's supposed to sign this from the clerk I'm sorry from the county recorder's office she signed she, when they made this copy they signed they, they made the copy so her signature was off of the page it wasn't even on the page. Now, here's the cool part. There's two contracts there. She's certifying this right here, even if her name was up here. She's certifying that everything here is true and correct. She's not certifying anything about this because it's in a box. This is a separate contract. So this oath, where the seal was, it was gone. So what this oath is saying is that this guy committed perjury along with this guy to say he was upholding some constitution. We don't know which one because it didn't say the Constitution for the United States, it said the Constitution. Oh. And then he sent it to me through the mail, which is mail fraud. And then he threw me in jail for five days because I pointed that out to him. <laughs> and I entered it into the record when I got to the court. I entered in eight documents. She comes back and she says, 25 cents a copy. She says, that'll be $1.75. I'm not a mathematician, but I knew it was going to be two bucks. <laughs> so I said, well, that's a deal. So I started looking through my documents, and the oath of office was gone. Monty, were you with me? I was there. Yes, sir. The document was gone, wasn't it? it was gone. And I said, where's the oath of office that was here? And she goes, I didn't see no oath of office. I said, yeah, the one that the judge sent me, it was in that pile of paperwork that you're supposed to copy, stamp, and seal and give back to me as, as information in the record. She goes, sir, you only gave me seven documents. 
I said, well, that's okay. I've got an extra one right here. 